Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in into my channel. My name is Sosnios uh, and I have a very important topic, a very important subject uh, uh, to tell you today and this is regarding the LGBTQ community and I'm sure you must have heard it, LGBTQ+, plus, they call it. It is a new movement uh, and it is coming to our children's school. Can you believe it? It is coming to our children's school. Uh, it's the, there is a curriculum uh, which has been decided by the government to teach children as young as four years old. Uh, it is about relationship and sex education, RSE, relationship and sex education, to our children. Uh, and some of the things that they're going to teach, and I've been doing a lot of research in the last few weeks, and some of the things that they're going to be teaching is really uh, scary. It's very scary, and as Christians, and as someone who has a, a healthy morality, we have to be able to stand up and protect our children, and we have to stand up and defend uh, our religious belief, and not just religious belief, but what nature is telling us, what nature has been showing us, and how we have been living. There are certain things that we cannot really change, and... The RSE education is, is teaching a whole lot of different ways of living, which scientifically uh, is not proven, and also religiously, according to one of the greatest books, I'm sure you all know this, the Bible already puts this very clearly about how we should live. Now, before I get into the Bible, let me just give you a description of some of the what the curriculum is going to cover. There are three uh, main areas from what I have found. There are three main areas that they're going to be uh, teaching our kids on. And the first thing is, is, uh, is the structure of family. The structure of family, not as we know it, but a very different kind of family. They want to redefine what family uh, is, is all about. And, I mean, this is really amazing because family is already defined. It's already defined. Nature has already redefined, has defined what, ma uh, what marriage and what family is, is about. I mean, what kind of definition are we going to bring that's not already been defined? It's already been defined by nature and it's already been defined by many religious books, including the great book, the Bible, has already redefined what marriage and what family is about. Why are we not studying? Why are we not following the principles that's already been laid out? No, the government and some of our generations has new ideas. Let's, they want to redefine a family. The second thing they want to redefine is the gender issue. Sex or gender. You know, like when, when you are filling an application form, they ask you, are you a male or female? There's only two choices. Are you a male or female? Are you one of those you know, the known gender, the known sex. And now there's going to be different kinds of uh, gender. All kinds of gender for that matter. There's, there's like, a, a, in, in Facebook alone, there's more than, uh, there's more than 52 uh, genders. Can you believe that? 52 genders? What, what in the world is coming? I mean, how in the world can you get to 52? We're trying to figure out, we're trying to even understand the two, uh, the two genders that we already have. We're studying them. Science is already studying about femininity and masculinity. We haven't even mastered that. And now we, we're coming up with all, this, uh, with all these genders and it is, it is going crazy. I'm telling you. And this is the kind of things that they're going to be teaching in the school. They're trying to teach our children that even if they are born as a male, as a boy, they may be a girl trapped in a boy's body. Imagine what kind of confusion that will bring to our children. These are not the kind of things that you should teach children, you should be discussing. Their mind is not able to, to process this. And even if you teach them, you have, to, you have to be teaching them the right way. The Bible says, teach the child in the way that he should grow up. Don't teach him anything that is corrupted. Don't teach him anything that even you yourself don't even know. Some of the things that's never been even proven scientifically, and they, they're already teaching it at school. Already started here in the United Kingdom. They've already started it in some schools. Uh, but officially, it's going to start from next year, September. 
be ready is going to be a primary uh, and, and mandatory uh, study and uh, you, your children have to learn it and they have to learn it in the way that the school is going to teach it but I'm going to I'm going to have something to say about that anyway in America it's spreading like wildfire especially this transgender issue male transitioning to a female and a female transitioning to a male the young people is just they're going wild they're going crazy about it they're saying it is possible for a male if he, if he wants, he can transform into a female. That's what they call it, trans, transgender. To trans it means to transfer, to go to another gender, to be another gender. Even though at birth he was born as a boy, he has everything that a boy has. He has the genitalia and he has the muscle and everything, the brain and everything. And now he, he can actually transition to a female if he has the feeling of the female. They said... Humans are not actually defined by the, by the sex that they are born at birth. Gender is something different, they're saying. Gender and sex are two different things. Gender is fluid. You can actually have any kinds of gender that you want. Even you can be a, a female one year and then, and then next year you can be a male and you can be vice versa. You can also be genderless. They call it gender neutral or gender non-conforming. Like, don't have no gender at all. You could just say, I don't have no gender and I don't want no one to, to refer to me as a male or female. What are you if you're not a male or if you're not a female? <laughs> I mean, this is really, I mean, I just want to laugh, really. But I'm, I'm just trying to put this as respectful as I can, but it is so crazy. But this is what is coming. Even John Lewis, there is a shop here in the United Kingdom. I don't know whether you have it in another country, but John Lewis is a high street retailer. They have a selection of clothing that doesn't, that's not female or male. It's a boy and a girl selection. So when the girls and when the boys come, they just go in there and buy. They're trying to teach our kids to be genderless, don't have no gender. Now you may think, well, what is wrong with that? Why not just anyone? Well, where is there? There has to be some kind of uh, boundaries. Come on, guys. There has to be some boundaries. If there's no boundaries, it's dangerous. That means people can just come up with anything. I mean, the LGBTQ+, if you, if you look at it, L, L is lesbian, G is uh, obviously gay, B bisexual, T transgender, and then the Q is like the queers, you know, like people who questions everything, who questions about their sexuality and who are actually experimenting, trying. And the plus is like, I mean, anybody who can come up with any kind of sexuality, any kind of family, any kind of gender is going to go crazy. People could be having sex with animals and it could be okay because that's how they want it. They're literally saying, like, don't question anyone. Don't challenge their belief. They can believe in whatever they want and they can do whatever they want. Really? That's very dangerous. We should say no to this. There are certain things that is very harmful, that is very destructive to people, to humanity, destructive to society, destructive to our world, destructive to our children. We can't be silent about this. We have to challenge it. We have to say some of the things that people come up with is, is, is wrong, is crazy. But anyway, they're thinking otherwise. They say, let's teach our children, uh, let's just tell them, that they don't have to be, uh, you know, either male or female. They can just experiment and they may have different feelings. No, children have all kinds of feelings. When I was a child, I had all kinds of feelings, but my mom and dad uh, knew how to raise me. They knew when to say to me no. They knew when to, when to say to me yes. They knew when to challenge me and they knew when to let me be by myself, uh, when to let me be myself. That is exactly how we should Treat our children. We can't allow our children just to be whatever they feel like. Because sometimes they feel crazy because they're children. That's why we call them children. That's why they need parents. That's why they need someone to guide them. That's why it's, there's someone to say to them, this is harmful and this is not. And let me tell you, some of these things, this transgender stuff and all this stuff is very crazy. It's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. I've done a lot of research. The confusion that it, that it can bring to children, even to young people and to adults, uh, later on in life is very dangerous. I mean, especially the transgender movement is really 
uh, it's becoming very challenging because people are just saying, you know, uh, I have just transitioned to to the other sex. So when they go to public toilets, even though they are a male, they went to use the female's toilet, and that's that's very dangerous. So RSE is about this is this is this is a, uh, a subject about all this matter relationship and sex education. So they're trying to define family and then define uh, gender and then they're trying to define sexuality as well. The third thing they want to define is sexuality. Sexuality. I mean, all kinds of sexuality they're trying to come up with. Even sexuality with with family member, which we call incest. Incest is a very dangerous thing. It's a curse. It's very harmful. That's why nobody marries and nobody actually have relationship, sexual relationship with their own family member. Even if they're close cousins, you don't get married because there is all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, biological issues and it can create problem. But if people want to marry their own family member, pff, let it be. That's, that's their sexual preference. We should be allowed that. Do people want to have sex with their, uh, with their pet? With their dog or with their cat? If they want it, they call it pansexual. Sex or uh, in the Bible is, is actually um, bestiality. That's what they call it, bestiality. It's forbidden. Do not have any kind of sexual relationship with, 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 with an animal. It's already written here. They know that some people are going to go crazy and trying to do these kind of things. And the Bible is warning us, don't do it. It's dangerous. It's harmful. It's actually abusing animals as well. There's no animal out there who wants to have a sexual relationship with a human. There isn't. Unless human coerce and actually or force them to do that, animals do not want to have any kind of sexual relationship with, a, with another different species. We are different species from an animal. That's why we are not called animals. That's why there's the animal kingdom and there is the human kingdom. When God created it in Genesis, he separated the two. They're called animals and we're called humans. We don't have no kinds of sexual relationship with animals. But this is, this is even going on now. In some countries are actually legalizing this. Even marrying your own pet. I mean, like, it's is wild anyway this is all coming up and god knows what they're going to teach our children as the years go by if we don't stand up and say something about it you don't know where it's going to go to they have from the, some of the research i have done they even have a plan to do it even in nursery schools as the years go by they want to teach it in nursery school like children from zero from the age they're born uh, to the age uh, like until like four years old, they want to teach them all these kinds of family with books. They have like, uh, they've already prepared a book, uh, you know, to show two gay couples raising a, a child. Two lesbian couples and raising a child. They're trying to teach them, they're trying to confuse their perception of reality. There are certain realities, ladies and gentlemen, that cannot be changed. It doesn't matter how civilized we have become. It doesn't matter if we are in the 21st century. There are certain laws. There are divine laws. They cannot be altered. If you try to alter those divine laws, it will have a repercussion. It will have an effect. It will have a curse. It will bring all kinds of consequences with it. Hell's consequence, emotional consequence, and physical consequence. For example, in the transgender community, a lot of people want to have a surgery. If they want to transition to the female, they want to have their body cut off. If it is a male, he wants to have his, his penis cut off so he can be given a vagina, which is an artificial vagina. It's not even real. And a female, if, you, if, if a female wants to transition to a male, she wants to have a surgery and she wants to be given an artificial penis. It's an artificial, it's not real. This affects their sexual life. It can affect their health, it's very dangerous. Even the, the societal rate in the, in the, in the homosexual community, in the transgender community is very high. Why? Because it can put you in a confusion that you cannot come out of. It's very dangerous. That's why they used to call it gender confusion. Now they're trying to give it a different name and making it sound like it's normal, but it's not normal. That's why they're trying to normalize it. If you hear most of the talk shows and the discussion that's been taking place, 
One of the most common words that you will hear is to normalize. Normalize homosexuality, normalize same-sex couples, normalize transgenderism, normalize. Why do you want to normalize something if it was normal in the first place? There has to be some abnormality to it in order for you to teach other people and make it normal. But people like me and many, many people out there in the world, there are nearly 7 billion people on earth, everyone is struggling trying to adjust, trying to accept this kind of way of living. It is difficult. It doesn't matter how many people are becoming homosexual. It doesn't matter how many, how many gay couples are actually adopting children. It doesn't matter how many young people are actually trying to be transgender and trying to transition from one sex to another. It doesn't matter how many of them are trying it. It is still not happening. Biologically, it's impossible. It's impossible. I've heard a testimony of a woman who was actually raised by a same-sex couple. She said the parents who raised them were actually same-sex couple. They were a lesbian couple. And she said that all her life when she grew up, she felt like there was something missing in her life, but she didn't know what it was. You see, one of the excuses they give is that children don't say nothing. Children don't understand. Children don't say nothing. If they're raised by a homosexual couple, if they're raised by... Uh, you know, whoever by an animal or whoever, they don't, they don't say nothing. They don't feel nothing. That's a lie. That's a big lie. I'm telling you, children do know. They may not articulate it. They may not know what is wrong because of the, the, you know, the development of a brain, their brain. They may not say it, but they do know. Believe me. Even if you ask people who have been sexually abused when they were children, they didn't know what was happening at the time. They couldn't tell whether it was right or wrong. But they knew that something was happening to them. And then when they grew up, they realized, oh, I was abused sexually when I was a child. That's what they say. They know exactly what happened to them. So don't say that children don't understand. They do understand. I've heard testimonies of, I mean, I've never had any friend and I've never had any family. I never, I never know anyone who've been raised by a same-sex couple. But I've heard, I'm beginning to hear testimonies now and what it is like, uh, you know, to be raised by a same-sex couple. And this, this woman was saying that, you know, the same-sex couple who raised her were actually very nice people, but it doesn't matter how nice they were, she always felt like she was missing something. Something inside her, I'm not talking about in the head, but inside her she felt empty. Something was missing in her life and she didn't know what it was. And then the day... When she actually grew up and she met her biological father, she said as soon as she saw him, that's when she felt complete for the first time in her life. In other words, she has been suffering as a child, even though she didn't know what it was and she didn't know how to express it. She was missing something and she was suffering. Children who miss, who don't have a biological father or who don't have a biological mother, Think there is a form of suffering. We may not know it, but we are suffering. We may express our suffering in different ways. We may come to addiction. To, we may be addicted to something. Uh, we may have a very high emotional reaction to things. There, there are so many things that can go wrong, but we don't, we don't even know it. We don't even know how to, how to articulate it and how to define it. But it does cause a problem because this is, this is a biological issue. This is a biological issue. This is a nature this is natural, guys. Even if your mind cannot understand, cannot articulate it, it does have an effect on you. And that is the reason why God in the Bible taught us that he showed us from Genesis. Genesis means the book of origin, how everything has begun. And it's a, it's a very important lesson that we learn this. It is foundational. There are certain things that you cannot change. When he talks about marriage, he talks about between male and female. The first couple were actually male and female. That's how humans have multiplied and we have reached the stage we are now. There's like 7 billion people on earth. There's, there's all kinds of people living on earth. And all of them are a result of a heterosexual relationship. All of them. It's impossible. Even a gay couple cannot actually raise a child. They cannot have a child unless they involve another another sex, another gender, to be a surrogate mother or a surrogate father, whatever you want to call it, a third person has to be involved with because biologically it's impossible for two gay people to have a child. Nature does not allow it. No. The biology does not allow it. 
the same when it comes to the transgender issue, which I will show you in another video, that even in biology, it is very clear that the XX chromosome and the XY chromosome, the female chromosome is XX, the male chromosome uh, chromosomes is XY, and it's printed in our cell, in every part of our body, and there's nothing you can do. Doesn't matter how you want to transition to the other sex, how transgender you want to be, there's no way that you can actually alter, you can overcome that. It's, transgenderism is an ideology, it is not scientific. It's an ideology, but your ideology cannot actually overrun, override nature. There are certain things that nature cannot allow us. That's why we need to line up our feeling with the sex that we are born in. The gender and sex are actually the same. They should be the same and it's binary, it's distinct and it cannot be changed. You're trying to change that, you're going to confuse yourself. You're going to damage yourself and you're going to destroy your future. That's exactly what is happening. So the Bible actually says he created them male and female. That's a very distinct, that's a very binary gender. It cannot change. He created them male and female. When God wanted to start the human family, the human family, the human race, he began with male and female. He didn't create the whole humanity at one time. No, he didn't. He just put one male and one female and... The cycle was already started, and then that was it. Humans multiply. To this day, we still multiply by the heterosexual principle. This is what we have to teach our kids. This is what we need to tell them. The family structure is male and female. The sex, uh, uh, the gender issue is sex and gender are actually the same thing. If you're born as a male, you're a male. Now, I'm not referring to intersex, please. Don't confuse this because transgender and intersex are two different things. Okay, for those of you who are intersex out there, this does not include you. Because intersex is people who are born with the same sex. They have the, that hormone confusion in their body or it can even be uh, in their sexual organ. Some women may not have uh, like uh, the, 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 the female anatomy. Uh, it could be a lot of things, even in their sexual parts, there could be all kinds of things. But those people even, they can actually receive medical help. And there are a lot of them who actually lead a normal life after having, uh, you know, uh, different kinds of treatment. It can be corrected. That's, that's, that's a deformity, that's an issue by itself. And it, it, can, be, uh, it can be corrected and it can be helped by specialists. But transgender is different. Now they're trying to confuse the two and telling us that it's all the same. It's not the same. Transgender is an ideology. That's why we're trying to teach our kids. Because we want our kids to make them think that they can actually be a transgender. No. If you grew up in a normal society, 99% of the time, 99% of the time that you are actually the sex that you are born. You never want to feel to go the other way. No. And even if society guides you the right way, it's simple. But if society is breaking down and, and, and we're teaching our kids some dangerous stuff like this, then God knows that a lot of children tomorrow, they're going to be confused and they're going to say, well, mommy, uh, well, I thought I was a boy. I think I want to be a girl. In fact, in America, you're not even allowed to question your child. This is amazing. You're not allowed to question your child. You're not allowed to challenge your child. If he comes home and say, mommy, uh, I, wanna, I think I'm a girl. I think there's a girl in me and I want to start wearing dress and I want to, you know, I want to be a girl. I want to transition. And then the family cannot say anything to the child. From that moment on, they have to do everything that the child wants. There was this mother who was actually advised this kind of advice and she allowed her daughter to go through all kinds of treatments and her daughter suffered. The whole family suffered. And she went out on public and I'm going to put the link uh, on my on my YouTube channel, I will put the link and you will see it. She was telling everyone going around the whole of the United States saying, please don't allow your child to go through this. Challenge their beliefs. If they come and home and say, I want to transition to the other sex, when in actuality they are born in a normal sex, you should tell them and say, please don't do it. Because the consequence is irreversible. Especially if you start having all this uh, treatments, taking all medications, and they call them 
puberty blockers, which actually blocks your, your hormones from developing. Uh, it's, it's, it's very dangerous because once you get to that stage, it's irreversible. Even if tomorrow, if you want to detransition and come back to the sex that you were born in, it's impossible. It will create a confusion. That's what we're calling gender confusion. And that has a lot of consequence. The suicidal rate is high. I'm telling you. They don't tell us this, but the suicidal rate in the transgender community is very high. So... Here in the United Kingdom, this is what they're going to be uh, start teaching our children. The family structure, gay couples raising a child, teaching our children it's okay. Even you yourself can be a gay, don't worry. They're just trying to destroy the very fabric of human. And God has given us lots of warning in the Bible. There is judgment. Please guard your family, guard your children. And next, on my next video, I will discuss with you what we should actually be doing and how we should actually be teaching our children and how we should also challenge publicly in your school or in, in any areas uh, that we have the opportunity. We should be challenging this belief and this, uh, this ideology and we should protect and we should save our children. We should fight for the future. We should fight for the generation. Otherwise... Uh, we are heading in a very wrong direction. Uh, so anyway, I'll come back on my next video and I'll see you. And I hope what I have shared with you today uh, will give you some understanding of uh, what is about to come. And I hope that all of you are going to uh, wake up and try to prepare yourself. And I will give you next week, a line by line, I'll give you exactly what exactly we should do and how we should teach our children, what steps we need to take in order to guard our service, to guard our community, and hopefully to guard our world. God bless you, uh, and I hope uh, this video has blessed you. Please, if you have been blessed by it, share it with a friend. Share it with somebody that you think is important to know this. You don't know it could affect anyone, any place uh, in the world right now. So share the video, subscribe, and I'm going to be releasing more videos. God bless you. Thank you very much.